All right, everybody, welcome to my new predecessor guide video. So in this video, I'll be going over the jungle and just give some basic guides and tips on how to play the jungler in predecessor. So I will say that I'm playing Chimera, but this is not a Chimera guide. Uh, if you want to know a guide for Chimera, I did make a video on him uh, that is on my channel. Uh, I do need an updated one because someone pointed out that I only added five items, so I do need to correct that. Um, that's my apologies, but anyways, let's jump right into it. So though this is not a Chimera guide video, I do suggest playing Chimera if you are new to the jungle. He is straightforward to play and he's an easy character to learn. And he's pretty overpowered early game and also can be decent late game if you have the right build for him. So if you are a new player, I do suggest playing him. There are a couple of other good ones like Grux and uh, Fang Mao, Terra, Zerus. They're all good, but Chimera is really the easiest one to learn. And he has a lot of uh, lifesteal and regeneration and healing. So he's pretty easy to learn when you, to what to do in the jungle. So the first thing you want to do is obviously select your card and crest. Uh, that depends on which character you're playing and all that. I won't go too deep into that, but once you have your card selected, you'll want to head down here to the red buff. Now there are advanced like techniques and tactics you can use, but for if you're a new player, I suggest just going for the red buff like the game suggests. But there are other tactics, and I could make a I'll make another video some other time about advanced tactics. But there is a, a strategy where you can go over to their buff and try to steal their red buff from their jungler. And that really also depends on who you're facing and whatnot. But generally, you want to go for your red buff right off the bat because that gives you an instant level once you get it done. So this next part here, I'm going to give credit to my brother. Um, when I play with him, his name's Can't See. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel, Can't See 29. You can go look him up if you want. But this next suggestion was something that he told me about. So I didn't ever do it in this video because I talked to him after I recorded the footage. So I will say that. But there is something that a lot of new players might not know about, and it's called the vision item. So while you are in the item selection menu, if you look at the top, there's a tab called vision. And down here, the there's the stealth wards are the normal wards that you can put down, like I showed in my other videos. But this sentry item here, what it does is it puts like a radar around you, and you'll be able to see if uh, enemies have placed wards down near you, and you'll be able to destroy them so you can be more sneaky. But what my brother suggested was not getting those right off the bat, because normally I would tell you just to instantly get that vision item. But what my brother suggested was holding onto the wards and before your red buff spawns, running over and placing a ward on their blue buff, or the enemy blue buff that is on the other side, straight across from where you should be, and placing it down there after you kill your red buff. And being able to watch for the enemy, because if the enemy isn't playing a character like Chimera where they heal a lot, typically when they go for that buff, they'll have low health. And if you're paying attention, you might be able to get an early pick and kill their uh, jungler pretty early game. Because uh, you, if you're playing Chimera, you're going to be full health because he heals a lot really early on. But a lot of characters, they'll be at half health when they go over for that blue buff. And what my brother suggested was keeping on wards and placing them down in the enemy jungle side so you can keep an eye on the enemy jungle, at least until you get Fangtooth the first time. So yeah, I'll give him credit for that. That's actually a really good idea. But you also want to be safe. If you go over to the enemy jungle and you get spotted, just turn around and head back and give up on it because it's not worth dying over. So after you've done all that, you'll want to pay attention to the lane that you start next to. And if they are pushed, the enemy has pushed your uh, ally way forward, what you'll be able to do is to jump them and hopefully you can get a kill, but you don't do too much damage early game. So you might at least be able to chase them off. And if you can get them sent back to base, that is almost as good as a kill. Not quite as good as a kill because a kill gives you experience in gold, but um, the delay of sending someone back to base can really set them back as well. So this next part that I'm going to rant about a little bit here is map awareness. So I can't stress enough, and you'll hear me in almost all of my guide videos, tell you that you need to be paying attention to the map. If you know where the enemies are at all times, where your teammates are at all times, who's in trouble on your team, who you can easily pick off on the enemy team, you'll be really set. But as a jungler, there's another thing that you want to be paying attention for. So on the map, there's two river buffs that are circled in blue, and then a green buff and a gold buff. You want to be paying attention to these cooldowns 
because if your team is struggling there is a chance that you might be able to catch an enemy going for these buffs and might catch them off guard because if a lot of times when people are fighting like especially in the mid lane they'll have the other opponent really low and they'll try to chase them off long enough that they can go get that buff and if you're paying attention you can jump in and try to steal it from them well not only steal it from them but get the kill as well so when you're running around in the jungle you want to be paying attention to those cooldowns on those because as i said getting early kills and doing as much damage as you can early game can really set you up for the whole match so the next big thing that i'm going to bring up is communication so if you were playing in a call with people that you know be sure to always tell them if you were in their side of the lane so if like you're you're on a call with someone that's off lane you want to let them know when you are on their side of the map and if they need help or anything you are just a call away from getting there but even if you are not in a call with people, if you were about to make a jump on someone, it's not bad to use the communication using C to tell someone that you were about to attack them or what it is to say, I'm on my way to left lane or I'm on my way to mid lane or just letting them know you're on your way. And that lets them know that you're close and they can look at the map if they're not doing that. And you'll be able to hopefully get a kill there. And just a pet peeve that I have that I want to mention, do not chase someone that is really low into a tower unless you know for a fact that you can get them. Because I've seen so many times where people will jump into the tower and they'll have a weak enemy and they'll just run around their tower and they'll be, the person who charges in after them will just keep getting blasted and it ends up that they end up dying and then the person who is low ends up living. So don't chase your low people into the towers unless you are full health and you can quickly get them. And if they are hiding behind the tower, you're not going to get them. They're going to run around the tower and it's just going to slowly kill you until you're dead and you're going to look like an idiot. Okay, so the next point I want to mention is ganking or double teaming or how, whatever you want to call it. The best way to get ahead early in the game is to be getting early kills. The best way to get early kills is to be paying attention to the map and hoping that someone in the lanes will overextend and be fighting your teammates. But like right here, I seen an opportunity where my teammates were having the upper hand and I could jump in and help them get the kill. But unfortunately the, the gadget there was able to blink away. And like I said, don't chase them into the tower. It's really not worth it. And I also just want to mention, don't favor one lane or else you're going to get yelled at in the chat. Um, I do get it. If <laughs> you know, if your one side is doing better at setting the enemy up for ganks or whatever, but you don't want to just be focusing on one lane. You want to be pretty diverse and helping everyone. Uh, usually I'll come out when I'm moving from one side to the other, I'll jump on the middle lane just to do some damage on my way. So that's just one thing I like to do on my way over. So the next point I want to make is covering lanes when your people are recalling. So a lot of times like your people in the lanes will be low on health or they'll need to go upgrade items. And it's really good for the jungler to go cover that lane if it is needed. If the lane's like really pushed up and like the minions are killing the tower, don't really worry about it. But if your teammate is really low on health and they're retreating, head over to that lane and cover the lane while they are gone. And that can save you from losing a tower really early on. And while it's on my mind, um, you don't want to be stealing too many minion kills from your allies that are in the lanes because they that's their only source of income for gold and experience. But if they're not there and no one's going to get the kill anyways, just go ahead and grab it. But you want to be making sure to be clearing your jungle out consistently. And actually, while we're on the subject of clearing jungle minions, uh, something that could be really good and kind of risky, but you don't want to do it unless you're safe and you know you can get away with it, but stealing the enemy jungle. So the jungle minions, they give you a lot of golden experience. They kind of can really boost you up really early. And if you get the opportunity, robbing the enemy jungler can be really good because it, it takes away golden experience for them as well as boosting you and giving you more golden experience in the return. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is Fangtooth. So if you don't know what Fangtooth is, once you kill it, it gives you buffs that are permanent. And later in the game, it gives you really good buffs that are temporary. So Fangtooth is something that you really want to be paying attention for. If the enemy team is going for it, you want to alert your team by letting them know attack Fangtooth or something, just letting them know that they need to be looking for that on the map. But ultimately it's up to you, the jungler, to be paying attention to Fangtooth when it's up, when it's good to attack and all of that stuff. 
Okay, so now let's talk about attacking Fangtooth. One thing I will mention that a lot of people don't seem to know is Chimera could take on the first few Fangtooths by himself. Of course, it's nice to have help, and if they are in the area, it makes it go a lot faster, but as you can see in this video, I'm taking him down pretty quick by myself. This can be pretty good, but also be risky to do at the same time. But I knew at this point, I had just killed their Aurora, which was their jungler, and I knew for a fact that their jungler was out of the situation and I could quickly go and take it and kill it by myself pretty quick. So especially when Fangtooth is on the enemy's side of the map, you really want to be careful when you go for it. You want to make sure that their enemy teams are all pushed forward, they're not paying attention. They're... Fangtooth is the last thing on their mind right now and when you go for it. And uh, if you can get their jungler completely out of the way like I had, I had 18 seconds where the jungler was completely out of the situation. She couldn't go over there and snipe it from me with smite or anything like that. Fangtooth is one of those things that can put your team in the lead really early on. So you want to be making sure that you're paying attention to when it's up, when you can go for it, make sure the enemy team doesn't get it. That's ultimately your job to make sure that that's what's going on and making sure that your team wards it whenever it's up and you can't go for it. You want to make sure that there's wards up there that the enemy aren't going for it. And you want to be paying attention to that at all times. So while it's on my mind, and I forgot to mention it earlier, um, you have the ability to use Smite, which is your number one ability if you press one on your keyboard. What that does is it does 500 damage. So you can use that to get the last hit on minions or Fangtooth or Orb Prime or things like that. You get one Smite ability every 90 seconds. So you want to be making sure that you use them because they do save you a lot of time when you're killing minions and getting your buffs and going for Fangtooth. And you can't use them back to back. You, you have a 15 second delay before you can use it again. So you, if you're going for Fangtooth, you want to hold on to that. And when it's at its last 500 health, quickly using that. The reason that you want to save it for the end is it stops people from coming over and sniping it from you. And while we're on the subject of sniping it, if you, the enemy team is going for it and it's really low, you want to get close enough that you can peek it and they don't know you're there. And you can go around and once it gets low enough, you can go over there and use Smite yourself and get that last hit. Because the way that Fangtooth and Aura Prime work is it's the last person who gets the hit. So the enemy team can do all the damage, but it's whoever does that last bit of damage that gets the buff. And that is why when you're going for Fangtooth, you want to be making sure that you can get it really quick. The enemy team aren't nearby because they'll go over and snipe it from you. And if you're outnumbered, it can be really bad because your whole team can die and you lose the buff. So I wanted to pull this clip because it was just something that really kind of bothered me and it's just kind of a general tip. But one, if you were there, like in this situation, and there's a jungler going for the buff and the person is really low and they're alone going for it, don't just sit there and watch it like this Iggy and Scorch did. Go in there and kill her. Don't just sit there and wait for the last hit because if it's their jungler, they're going to use that smite ability and you're not going to be able to snipe it from them. But if Aggie and Scorch went for the kill and killed her, then she, he would have got the kill, and then the Fangtooth would have been really low, and he could have just killed the Fangtooth himself after he got the kill. So yeah, in this situation, if you see the Aurora or the jungle going for the Fangtooth alone, just go for the kill. Go for them, do damage to them. A lot of times they'll just focus on getting that last kill, and they'll just focus on getting Fangtooth. That's all they, they just fixate on that, and you can usually kill them pretty easily. So in this situation, he should have burned the witch. This next thing isn't necessarily a guide for being in the jungle. It's just kind of a general thing to say. But if you were in the off lane or the duo lane, don't steal your jungle's minions or buffs. That really just sets your person that's in the jungle back and makes it so they can't get levels as fast. They're not getting as much gold. And if they need to get the stuff, they have to go steal from the enemy jungler. And that can just be dangerous and... It's just all around annoying. Like in this game, my teammates kept stealing my blue buff. That was my uh, Aurora in the offlane kept going and stealing my blue buff, stealing my minions. And I just never went over and helped her in her lane because I was never over there because I didn't have a reason to. Because she kept killing all my minions, so I couldn't go over there and get the kills for them. So just don't be annoying like that. It's just, it doesn't do any good for your team. But I will mention, uh, make sure that you're always killing your buffs like this. They give you a ton of experience in gold. And also the buffs that it gives is really good. 
The red one will give you on hit damage, which means if you're doing damage to somebody, it'll give them extra damage. Um, I think it's like kind of burning damage. I don't know how that works entirely. But the blue one will give you mana regeneration and as well as ability haste, which can be really good if you're in a fight, which you're not getting if your off lane is stealing that from you. So don't be don't be this Aurora. Okay, so the last bit of advice I'm going to give you is the only item that I'm going to suggest that you get for ever, no matter what character you're playing. But I say it every video, getting a tainted item. If you don't know what a tainted item is, if you search it in the search bar, um, it's just an item that there's one for every kind of character, that one that adds magical damage, attack speed, critical damage. There's one of every kind, but what it does is it makes it so you do reduced healing on your enemy that you're fighting. And reducing their healing can be really big in a fight because a lot of times you'll be in team fights and it feels like no matter what you do, the enemy team does not die. They do not take damage. And that is because they have a lot of healing and you need to be making sure that you reduce that healing because it could be really huge. And no matter what game you are playing, having reducing the enemy healing is one of the most OP things that you can have. Okay, well, that's all the advice and tips that I have. If you have any suggestions that you think that I missed or I should add let me know in the comments because like I'm not perfect I don't know everything about this game and I might have missed something so feel free to add to this and go to the comments and see what other people have added but for some final remarks I will just say the biggest things that you can do is being paying attention to the map watching for opportunities to gank and get kills and don't focus on jungle minions too much. If you are killing jungle minions and you see the perfect opportunity to kill an enemy in the lane that you're next to, stop what you are doing and go for that kill. That is significantly better for your team if you can get a kill rather than going for those minions. You can always go back and kill them later. And some last bonus advice I'll give you. Don't be too greedy. Don't die doing something stupid. Don't die going for kills that you're going to end up regretting trying to go for. And if someone steals your kill and you get the assist, don't feel too bad. I I, it, I know it can be really frustrating to do all the damage on someone and then Akira comes and gets the last hit on them all. And you just kind of look bad because you have a ton of assists and no kills. Don't worry too much about that because assists are just as good as kills. You're getting that, that kill as well as you're getting experience and gold from it anyways. And like I said, if you send someone back even that's still really good. It's not as good as a kill, but it's still good. So even if you can just go into the lane, do some damage and leave, you want to be sh sure that you do that. But anyways, if you guys like the video, be sure to like the video as well as subscribing and letting me know in the comments what you want to see next. I will be making a guide for each lane, but if you want to see anything else, like anything specific, like I made a video on how to face ranged opponents in the in the off lane, if there's anything like that that you struggle with, let me know and I'll work on a video. Because I, when I make a video, I play several games against that situation and see what works best. So let me know and I will work on that for you guys. But uh, like I said, be sure to subscribe to see more and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.